Okay, so now that that water pump is unbolted and the surfaces are clean where the gasket's gonna go, it's time to get this pulley off here, which honestly is not the worst thing because it sounds like absolute crap. It's probably a 14. That worked a little better. Okay, just wanna break this one loose because you don't wanna take it out too far with the ratchet because it'll get stuck between the wheel well and the, and the bolt there. So don't make that mistake. I've done that plenty of times in my life. Let's grab the new water pump. Where did I put the new water pump is the question. I'm kind of retarded. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so just by the way, there is a little gasket, an O-ring on the back of this right here. You can see it right there. Don't forget to replace that. And don't forget to clean off the surfaces that it mounts to because that O-ring seals up this hole right here. So don't forget about that. So let's get this back into position here. Okay. Make sure my o-ring didn't fall out. All right, it's still in there. Then we'll grab our gasket for the water pump. Okay, so I just stuck two bolts through the holes here to hold the gasket on, keep it lined up. And now it's time to get this water pump started on here. So it's gonna be a little tricky to line up. These upper holes, there's only gonna be two holes down here that'll be tricky to line up. So the one that goes through where that o-ring is and then threads into the block behind it, that's gonna be the one that's gonna be a little bit tricky. But nonetheless, we shall get it. In fact, I think I already got it. Yep, I already got it. Take another one with a washer, put it on the bottom of that, take a 10 mil, start running these in. And I'm not gonna tighten these yet, I'm just gonna get them all seated. Yeah, that's gonna be that one. So the washer goes there, cause it's a little bit longer. So let me give you a little bit, of, a little visual representation here. So this is how the water pump sits in the car here. We got one bolt here. This one is left open until we put this guy back there. That guy goes there. So this one bolt here, this one is left open. We'll have this bolt is gonna have one with a washer on it. There's another one with a washer and another one with a washer. So these three will have washers. This one doesn't have a washer and this one doesn't have a washer. So this is kind of the hardest one to get to. It's still not very hard to get to, but that's how the bolts are laid out. This one is gonna hold one of the timing covers on. So you don't have to, this will be left open for now. Okay, let me find out these torque specs real quick. So it looks like each one of those water pump bolts is gonna get about eight foot pounds. So that's pretty much just gonna be like wrist tight. Like that. Like that. Okay, so these don't need to be too crazy tight. Eight foot pounds is not very much. You just want this tight enough to where these aren't gonna leak. And uh, you definitely, definitely do not wanna break one of these bolts off. So just be real careful when you're doing this. Just keep on tightening her until she gets loose and back it off half a turn. Just kidding. Okay, so water pump officially installed. Now let's get that timing belt guide, the new one installed. I'm gonna assume the words face outward. I don't know, just a guess. And that bolt fell into here, didn't it? Yes, I'm sure it did. I, I'm kind of retarded. Now where did it fall? That's definitely for that. So, get this reinstalled. This is gonna be good and tight. Yep, that feels pretty good. Okay, now it's time to start fishing the new timing belt onto here. All right, so. We're gonna grab it and drop it down through here. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm gonna get this routed through the bottom. I hate when I find a bolt that I have no idea what it went to. Guy back there, that guy goes there. Oh, that goes through the, through the alternator bracket, I think. It goes right here. Yep, good. Okay, so. We'll get the belt routed onto the bottom two gears here. Actually, first, I need to put this sensor back in place. So, I'll take this sensor here, drop it back down this way, clean it up a little bit. Okay. So, it's gonna go like that, that on there. Okay, that doesn't need to be too crazy tight either, but get it on there snug. Basically, anything that's tightening into aluminum does not need to be crazy tight. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder why that is. Oh, it does this. Okay. Yeah, make sure you route the timing belt the right direction. So the timing belt goes around here, up and underneath this upper pulley. So make sure you definitely don't route the timing belt 
the wrong way. So, there. And like that. All right, we'll leave this up here out of the way just so that it's routed correctly. Take a new tensioner pulley. Kind of silly that they don't send you with the new spring, but that's okay. We'll use the old one, I suppose. All right, folks, so I'm sitting here editing part two of this timing belt video, and I'm realizing that I did not get adequate video footage or explain it well enough at the time of recording. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get the bottom half of the timing belt routed over the crankshaft pulley and over the oil pump pulley. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna leave the top part of the timing belt just loose, go grab the new tensioner pulley, put the left side of the tensioner onto the pin, get it lined up, then start the bolt in through the center of the pulley itself. And then you'll take the spring and stretch it up onto its pin. Then you'll take your screwdriver like we did in part one of the timing belt video and you'll shove down on the outer lip of that pulley to stretch the spring out, tighten the bolt up to lock it into that loose position. And that way you can slip the belt on and off of that pulley without, uh, without having to put too much tension on the belt until you get all your timing marks lined up. At that point, you can back that bolt out of the tensioner pulley, let the pulley snap onto the belt and apply tension to it. Then you can lock that bolt back into place. And at that point, your belt will be tensioned and you're good to go. Okay, so timing belt's on there, it's all routed. Next thing to do is gonna be to put this lower timing cover back on, again, just for temporary. And then put this crank pulley back on for temporary. And we'll check and make sure the timing marks all align once again, which they appear not to. So we'll start over. Take a screwdriver, pop this off of here. Okay, we got the crank lined back up. Now let's get this cam lined back up. Perfect, cam's lined up. Okay, move my tensioner down and locked it in place so that way I have room to work with this belt here. Now what I wanna do is pull it nice and tight, take all the slack out, run it around and slip it on there. What's going on Frank? How are you doing? Not too bad, just getting this timing belt on, trying to get the engine timed here. Is it pretty tough or not? No, it's not too big of a deal, it's just okay. Okay. a little bit finicky. Okay. Is everything else going okay? Yeah, everything else is going good. Should have her done by the end of the day, I'm uh, sure. Another belt was shredded, wasn't it? Oh yeah, I mean, look at it. It's a piece of crap, I'm sure. First of all, yeah. not only was it shredded, yeah. it was about ready to tear through. Oh, wow. And then you could see yeah. it's about three quarters the width of the new one. Oh yeah. So yeah, no. all the rest of that material is it's gone. It's just gone. gone. Didn't line up that time, so let's try it again. How about the cam? All right, I think we got it here. So cam marks line up. That's still stuck at the zero. So let's loosen this off and there's tension up top. So let's loosen this tensioner. All right, let's get, uh, let's rotate this engine around and see what happens. All right, get the bolt back in there. Let's rotate this thing around. Okay, it's back at top dead center. Looks like it's probably on the compression stroke again. <clears throat> yeah, lines back up. Perfect. So now we can take a 14 mil, make sure that's nice and tight, and cinch it down. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna pull this crank pulley back off.
we'll pull the timing cover back off. And we will get some RTV for this. So you got three bolts, two short ones, one long one. We'll get this puppy into position. Carefully stick it up here without smearing RTV all over everything. Okay, short one goes here. The one long one goes right here. And then this last short one, as you may recall, goes in the middle, which I can actually reach pretty well from down here. You might want to get it from the top, do whatever you want to do. Whatever is easier for you. Okay, then we can just snug these up. They don't need to be crazy tight. Now we can slip this crank pulley back on. You can't really tighten this with a ratchet very well, so I don't love to use impact drivers for tightening bolts, but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. You wanna get the upper timing cover on. And I'm actually not gonna put any gasket maker on the upper timing cover, because it, it doesn't need any. Honestly, the lower one didn't probably need any either, but I'm gonna put it on there anyway. Let's get this back into position. And then I'll take this timing cover. Okay, let's reroute this wire back the way it goes so that it doesn't get ripped off by these belts once we get them all back where they're supposed to be. Okay, let's get this power steering belt back on here. So that goes on the back rear pulley of the crankshaft pulley. And you just slip it up over the time or the uh, water pump. Good. Get that nice and tight. Okay, so after you get the belt tight and that uh, tensioner bolt tight, we're gonna go back up here to that one that we loosened up later. Hopefully you could see this on the GoPro, but we'll just snug that back down. This is that top bolt on the power steering bump, on the power steering pump. All right, folks, so the next thing we're gonna do here is get gloved up again. I had to take a little break to go ride the motorcycle. Grab your alternator. Well, shoot, back it up. Don't need the alternator yet. We need to grab our brackets. Again, we want to separate these two pieces. We'll put that bolt back in there. And then we'll get this one positioned. So here's what I'm gonna do is, I'll stick one bolt in there. I'll drop it down where it goes. And I'll feel for the hole with my finger there's one of them. Oh, hang on. Let me find the holes here. All right, I got one of them started. Now let's get the other one started. Again, we'll just feed it into the bracket and then we'll just wiggle this around until that bolt works its way into its house or into its home. And then we'll get it started into the hole. Okay, those are both started. All right, so after you've wiggled it and finagled it and cussed at it enough, you should be able to get those bolts most of the way in there, at which point you'll have made enough room to go in with a wrench and get it tightened down. So you don't want to get it all the way tight yet. What you want to do before you get it all the way tight is take your motor mount and get it positioned first. So, I'll get that there. And we'll thread these in. Now we can go tighten the other side, which I'm gonna use a, one of these weird box end wrenches for, because it's kinda a little bit harder to get to. It's actually a little bit easier if you go up from underneath. It's right there. Now we'll take this part of the bracket and get it secured. And guys, we are starting to get real close to being able to fire this thing up. 
or I should say to be able to attempt to fire this thing up because I'm gonna be honest I got no idea if it'll run but we're hoping for the best okay with that bracket bolted up we can go ahead and get the alternator in place and then we can pretty much finish up everything left in the front of the engine here. When it, you're gonna start need to go over to the rear of the engine and underneath the engine, but we'll almost be done with this side after this. Okay, ran it in there till it touched. That'll be good enough. Then we'll take this bolt out. Line these two pieces here up. Pivot the alternator down. Run the bolt through the block, through the bracket, and then into the alternator. Then we'll take a 12 mil. So next we can tighten down this bolt right here that holds this bracket on that we took off earlier to get the water pump out. I don't have a torque spec for you on this one, but just get it nice and tight. And then we'll get our new belt on. Okay, belt's on. Let's put some tension on it. And we do that by tightening up this bolt here. Okay, that's nice and tight. So you just wanna get your belt good and tight, not crazy tight to where you're putting a bunch of strain on that bearing, but tight enough. Then we'll get this pivoting bolt here, tighten down. Good. Then we will take our wire harness for the alternator, plug her into the back. We'll put our wire back on top. Then we'll clip our clip connector back where it goes, as such. All right, folks, so like I said, I was filming two different videos, one for the head gasket and one for the timing belt. So I forgot to film a good ending for the timing belt video. So at this point, you should pretty much be ready to fire up the engine. All you have left to do is to hook up the battery for one and to put the valve cover back on for two. So those are the only things you have left to do. You should have all your harnesses, all your connectors, everything should be plugged back in. So get that battery hooked up, get your valve cover put on along with your new valve cover gasket. Snug down those nuts on top of each one of those spark plug tubes. You don't have to get them real tight. Just snug them down and you should be ready to fire this thing up. So let's jump ahead to that part. Okay, so we got the battery hooked up to my homemade jump box. Did it once over. Made sure everything was hooked up, all the sensors and everything. All the connectors are plugged in. Let's try it again. Try one more time and see if she fires right up this time. Alright folks, if you found this video helpful, go on down there and hit that like button if you would. And while you're down there, go ahead and hit that subscribe button too. Alright folks, thank you and we'll see you in the next one. Be fine. Listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm kind of retarded. In that. <laughs>